Welcome to the Spark of Humanity Network series on feeding our roots or seeing that our roots get the nutrition they need to feed our sparks. Why do we care about this? Axie's going to read a book. Oh, I'm, I'm Martha Holden. And with me today are Ann Wade and Axie Noyce. And we will be talking specifically today about one of the resources that's on the Spark of Humanity Network website, which is Pilgrimage of Love. But we'll get to that, but let's first create the context. Axie, would you read the? I will. Okay. This is a lovely book that Martha created with the drawings that we're all very proud of. Spark, a contemplative way to effective engagement. And here we go with page one. In everyone, in each one of us, there is a spark of humanity. Sometimes we are afraid that something might damage our spark. We are afraid it might be put out. It cannot be. Even though at times we are not feeling it, another page, sometimes our sparks are defended. Sometimes they're distorted. Make sure you look at this little book on the, on the website because the drawings are great. Sometimes they're distorted. Sometimes our sparks are baffled. Sometimes all three. Sometimes so much we're not aware that we even have one. Regardless, in everyone, everyone we meet, we think of, anyone we can think of, there is a spark of humanity in us too, regardless how baffled or distorted or defended. All sparks are made of, some, of the same stuff. Sparks have a natural affinity for each other. This is a good thing. When you, through your spark, affirm and connect with the spark in another, regardless how defended or distorted or baffled they are, their spark is strengthened. <laughs> this is the truth now, folks. <laughs> that changes things. It seems that the strengthened spark acts to erode the defenses release the distortions, clarify the bafflement. From the inside, very important, it is very good. How might you claim your spark? That's the question. Thank you, Axie. Thank you, Axie. Yep. So our sparks that we each have are powerful and effective agents of transformation, right? Right. And, but they have needs and they need to be, we want them to be strong so that we can have a constructive positive impact in the world. And they have needs which I at least and some of us visualize as roots, reaching out to draw in what our spark needs in order to be strong and willing to engage with and confirm and affirm the spark in another. Right? Am I right so far, Axel? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that okay. And good. it's important that roots are usually not seen. Right, right. So we're talking about things that function, as you can see from the upper part of the oak tree, they, they do a good job, roots. But you don't see or, or, or necessarily witness the action, you see the result. So it's right. Yeah. And I think also it's important for me, at least in my experience, my spark communicates to my roots to reach out to get what the spark needs. This is not a cognitive cerebral process. My brain is of, the, at least the part I'm in access, is of no help here. Yes. Right? Very important. Very important. Out of the rational mind, please. <laughs> Just right. Let the rational mind go. Let the spark communicate to and get what it needs. So it 
my spark may need things that it's not used to needing as I continue to do this work, to reach out into the world and work to affirm the sparks of others. So on the Spark of Humanity Network website, we're offering a variety of resources that may serve to feed people's sparks through their root systems, or may not. We're just offering them. And today, we are here to, in two sessions, talk about one of the resources we're offering, which is something called the Pilgrimage of Love. Well, I'm very interested in learning more about the Pilgrimage of Love. I'm just a newbie in the spark of humanity, but I'm already feeling, I've seen it working in my life with my relationships with others, and it's really been fun to get involved. So I'd like to ask you, Martha, about how did this pilgrimage of love become? How did it start? How did it start? Right, it's my theory, and I think it says it on the website, that love has always been in pilgrimage. Um, but I became aware of it. I made a physical pilgrimage in 2006, which I called Pilgrimage of Hope. And I made a pilgrimage of 2007, which I called Pilgrimage of Faith. And because um, I have roots that draw from the Christian tradition, when I think of hope and faith, the next thing I think of is love. So I knew and I had an idea to do a pilgrimage of going around the world. I wanted to meet with the women in Gaza who were um, ground down and having a hard time and, and connect with them and have them develop a prayer connection with the women in other places around the world that were having a hard time. Somebody needs to read the prayer. Who wants to? And Sure, sure. You have it there? I think I do. OK. All living, ever loving, you who breathe in us the sense of your presence and desire of us only your wholeness, we bring before you the pilgrimage of love, a communion of prayer through the underside, form and flow through it as you will. Bless those within its embrace, fostering them in wisdom, strength, stamina, and joy that it may embody your desire and renew us all for your service in the whatever, in the whatever, <laughs> for the whatever, <laughs> amen. Whatever. <laughs> We're going to be talking about prayer later, but this is the idea that the pilgrimage of love I envision as a communion of prayer to the underside. And the underside is a concept I picked up from the work of the Quaker sociologist Elise Boulding, who wrote a book about women having the great impact in history, but they didn't write the history, so we don't hear about it. But they were the ones that, when they were traded off to the neighboring king in marriage, would make sure that there was peace between the kingdoms. So, but they weren't seen, so Elise had the idea of underside. So it's a, communion of prayer through the underside. And I, I didn't do the pilgrimage because some friends came to visit me from South Sudan. And, and as they were leaving me, I was seeing them off at the airport, I asked them to please have the mothers in Okobo, South Sudan, pray for the mothers in the Gaza. Because that at least would start, because the Gaza was where I wanted to start. And as I was walking away from the gate, I realized that I didn't physically need to do the pilgrimage, that love was doing the pilgrimage, and that this prayer energy, this connection of solidarity between the, the women who are in difficult situations, who are not visible to the conventional eye in South Sudan, in Gaza, South India, Myanmar, South Korea, Hong Kong were the places I was thinking of going at that point. Um, that they, that love was sort of like, like a crystal, like a seed crystal and a super saturated solution. Suddenly this pilgrimage of love began to form conceptually. Mm -hmm. And then the prayer came later. And, the, and so I offered it to people and people have liked it. And I thought that it might be useful for people. 
And the version that Anne read is not in some ways the same as the one on the website. It doesn't make any difference. The whole point is to make it so it works for you. In, in that regard, could you talk about the brackets that they'll find in the prayer? There are, there are brackets. suggested words, but there's a lot brackets. of flexibility. Right. with. Right. The idea is that, um, at least for me, that people come from different faith traditions, and some people um, adamantly disavow any faith tradition whatsoever. And the point is to, because it's, our sparks are, don't have any dogma traditions. or doctrine or traditions, they just are. So whatever the sparks need, we want to make sure that the, that the language of what we offer is open enough for people's sparks to be fed without putting them in any particular category. We'll talk about that more in the second segment, mm -hmm. um, okay. about the brackets and the mm -hmm. prayers and what people might put in there and how they might spell it and all that. Now, how, how does this relate completely into the, the spark of humanity? The spark of humanity network, I don't know. That's, a, that's my honest question. I have no idea. The idea of the pilgrimage of love and my sense of it growing and developing um, began in 2010. The Spark of Humanity Network began to form in 2017. Oh. So um, although it may have, you know, what do I know? The thing I like one of the things I like about the Spark of Humanity Network is I have no idea who the members are. I can walk down the street and I may be bumping into members of the Spark of Humanity Network all over the place and have no idea who they are. And they may not know who they are yet. And they are may yet. not know who they are. And it's the same thing with the Pilgrimage of Love. Yeah. Right. Is that right. is that I I pray for the one of the benefits of signing on to this if you think there is a benefit, is that I put spiritual energy into the pilgrimage of love <coughs> as powerfully as I can every day. Mm. And that, so it's gone, this sort of crystal and the structure that's formed from that first, that first sensation leaving the gate at Logan Airport after seeing my Sudanese friends into security, um, I've felt it moving. So it goes, it's intergalactic. It may be intergalactic. I don't know. I don't trace mm -hmm. it outside the galaxy. It may go through um, the veil that we call death. I don't know, but it's, oh, yeah. you know. And the Spark of Humanity Network, same thing. And when we're doing roots meditations, often we're finding that the, the roots are reaching through um, conventional, what seems like barriers, mm -hmm. to ga gather nourishment and connection with other people and their sparks. Can I talk a little bit about Please my do. perception of, <laughs> of uh, pilgrimage? Because Martha, your vision, uh, you, you're, it went so big that it might intimidate, uh, 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 you know, and, and I don't want that to happen. Okay. I mean, you ended up literally in Sudan. Not all of us may end up there, nor need we have to. My uh, pilgrimage is, is more of a householder. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, but I, I'm inspired by you. I'm not, I'm not trying, I mean, I am really glad you went to Sudan. Um, uh, and, and, it, and, you know, the story inspires me, but it is not necessary to, to travel that far no. to do this work at all. No, right. One can do it within the confines of their home in a very humble, uh, in a humble way. And, and that's what I, when you, when you talk about from, the, from beneath, mm -hmm. that uh, also mm -hmm. echoes to me, uh, it's, it's uh, anti-hierarchical. Right. It is from where you are. Mm -hmm. Right now, from the ground where you stand or sit or lie at this very moment in time, mm -hmm. is where this this move, next movement and any action you take, whether it's to feed the birds or wash a dish, this is a pilgrimage. 
-hmm. And it's, it's, the, it's more of what's going on up here and con concepts that help to foster, you Thank know, you. the good, the, you know. So, and that, so it can be small and oh, mm -hmm. it can start small and, you know, whatever. It's just, or yeah. it might get, you know, really big. Or it's yeah. it could be very physically small yeah. because my yes. life now is very physically yeah. small. Yeah. But um, but that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that the love the pilgrimage of the love with which I choose to associate myself is not very big. Trust me, I'm very grateful that I didn't need to physically go to the Gaza. Yes. You know, that's yeah. I'm I'm old and I like my not yet. here. Not yet. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. Not yet. But the, so it's yeah, yeah. It's a good point. That's yeah. not. It's it's not about physical movement, it's not it about could anything, be. It could it be. It well could be. Yeah. But it's about what the spark needs. Mm -hmm. This is the change, the shift in me is, mm -hmm. is that I'm realizing, and I think in general, that what does my spark needs, need to be fed? And mm -hmm. if it needs to be here, fine, but if it needs to go to Machu Picchu, well, you know, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, too, in, in a couple of our last episodes, we had tried to incorporate how using this helps our just everyday interactions with people. Right. And just, um, I, I found that very helpful just in dealing with difficulties, dealing mm -hmm. with uncomfortable personalities, and, and we all have that in our lives, no matter where we go. We're and so you, it's it's a tool for me to the spark of humanity. Yeah, the spark. Of, yeah, to help me work. to slow down and to think about the other person's knowing that they have a spark too, mm -hmm. and trying to get in touch with their spark and 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 also, or that's not really it's connecting. Yes. Mm. Whether they're whether it's comfortable or not, just making that connection with the spark, mm. and it's that's um, and realizing if you're talking to somebody who's grab, crabbing at you in the grocery line, this person has a defended spark. Right. And that's mm -hmm. you know oh, and you know right. <laughs> and, do and I need to get that? No. Let's see if maybe I can send some melting. Uh, up, uh, energy from my own spark to theirs to help to help and if not you know or maybe my spark is baffled right exactly yes so to recognize it's mm -hmm. right and making sure that my spark is fed that's the that's the thing to, mm -hmm. to watch out for to make mm -hmm. sure that Nourishing. I'm aware that my spark can't just be doing this stuff in the grocery line mm -hmm. um, and that's where that, this pilgrimage of love too helps to feed and fuel and help our roots or to feed our spark feed yeah. our mm -hmm. sparks right yeah and give our roots so we were going to maybe talk about because this is a prayer what does prayer mean to you Anne? well my my religious background is not very good because i was kind of it is yanked it is, around so. you know i my mother was somebody who was born Protestant, but then was disowned by her church when she fell in love with a Catholic. And, mm -hmm. and so I have just seen so much turmoil in my religious upbringing. So I've, to me, prayer is, is, is relatively new in my life that I'm incorporating. Have you been able to free it from religion? Yes, I have. Yes, Good. I have. And, and so it's more, now for me, it's a centering, it's a calming, a soothing. Um, it's a practice, and I'm still working on developing it, but it's, it's been very helpful. Good, yeah, and Axe, what do you? Um, well, uh, about 25 years ago, I um, started in a recovery program, which is anonymous, so I won't go any further into that. But it's a 12-step program, and part of that program, there were some prayers connected with it that a friend of mine very strongly suggested that I learn and practice. 
And up until that time, I had decided prayer was not for me. It was, uh, I basically rejected my Christian upbringing. And, um, uh, you know, more Native American, and one of the people who helped me the most in that early, in those early times 25 years ago, was a Native American woman. And so the way that we prayed there with her, and she taught me to pray, was totally improvised. Mm -hmm. There were no set prayers, there were no books, it was whatever was on your heart and mind and weighing on you. So you prayed directly without any uh, form. Then later, I learned some prayers that I w was initially resistant to, but, but this is what I've learned, is that those prayers that, that we share with other people and don't change, if you say this prayer the way it is, mm -hmm. leave it alone, you're saying it with multitudes of other people, exactly the same thing. Things are occurring to us uh, in, in that rooted, invisible world. Mm -hmm. And uh, things happen because of that. And the, the, the only thing that I'm totally aware of is that prayer, prayer excuse me, is transformative. Um, there are some prayers that will, uh, you know, basically build a little uh, chrysalis around you and you start to change as you practice and continue to say those prayers. And that, I mean, this is my, you know, th th my reality. It's it, the other part that I was sort of always thought, well, prayer is airy-fairy and there's nothing very practical about it. Uh, you can't really get your hands on it. or, But that's not the case. It turns out it's very nuts and bolts because we are not just material beings, we are spiritual beings. And this is where the real transformation happens, is in, the, is, is in that part of ourself, which in this society is really not, uh, you know, uh, valued or, or acknowledged uh, so much. And I, I'm hoping that this kind of work that we're talking about today can change that. So prayer, that's what it means. It's wonderful. I mean, I yeah. really, it's, 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 uh, it's sort of like a, a turning on a fan or something that moves air, moves things, and, and you don't know where you're going where you're going to end up once you start the practice. But it's been very positive in my life. Yeah. Is there any? What are you praying to, if anything? I mean, um, well, that's talk it. About, we we that? talk about um, uh, uh, a loving power greater than ourselves that is of our understanding. So initially, uh, my friend in this 12-step program, uh, uh, her words for it were the great mystery, which I really loved because it meant that I didn't know what it is. And that was right. That was, and but since then, um, I. Uh, at one stage I realized I was uh, acting on a power greater than myself that was not loving. It was an old idea of, mm. of this uh, entity. It's not really an entity of this energy uh, that was not loving. And it came from old ideas that I picked up from my uh, childhood of Christianity, of a, a judgmental and, and punishing God. And um, it was suggested that I drop that and it never occurred to me that I could fire a higher power <laughs> but I, and then find another one that's loving. And, and that's what I uh, was encouraged to do. So it's an it's a, uh, what you, evolving. Um, some days it's uh, an understanding where I understand that I don't understand. Mm. And some days I ver it's not so much a, a, a mental understanding but a a feeling of connection that mm. that is very mm. much connected to that whether the spark is being fed or whether I've forgotten it and left it abandoned on the doorstep <laughs> <laughs> unfed for three days you know it that can make a big difference in how I perceive this this being that I pray to which is okay and whether it's inside also or or outside yeah. external to myself I, I like to try to understand that it's within me Mm -hmm. It's very important. Sort of like your spark. Yes, exactly like G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's prayer is a way. It's it's a way your spark reaches out for new 
nutrition. Well, I mean, let's among think other about it, it, for me, prayer is like song. Okay. If uh, it's like hymn, it's like psalms, it's like poetry. Uh, it's it's trying to sometimes just trying to reach out the same way the roots reach out for that nourishment. For uh, some, that is in the. Uh, improvisational prayer of when I'm praying on a very personal internal level. When I'm using a prayer that that is a prayer that other people are saying, I feel that I'm on a path that's well-worn. Mm. Uh, there are uh, places where I might stop and look at the view and and it's familiar to me. And then I'll see something that I've been walked on this path a hundred, hundred times, and I've never seen that before. And that is a, a, right there within the prayer, as though somebody tucked something in <laughs> that I had not <laughs> seen before. So there's a lot of, this is the thing when you start, rep, there is charm, the Native Americans and other uh, 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 primary uh, cultures know ch there is charm in repetition. Mm. And I mean magic in repetition. Uh, you know, repetition has power. Have, it has power. So there's, you know, you just repeat these. these some some things prayers are repeated. Some things are, are are said and may never be said again. Yeah, you know, the same way. And there's nothing That's wrong. With I'm it. not sure what isn't prayer. Tell you the truth. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so, there's some prayers that are really pretty uh, vile. You know, you, but all prayer is not good. Okay. You, you, know, you have to be careful okay. what you pray for. Do you want to just expand on that a little bit? Well, I don't think actually no, no. come to, you know, it's pretty, t because all of this stuff is, we can get kind of uh, fuzzy and warm, and, but right. you know, I've found myself, you know, um, uh, you know, having unkind thoughts about people. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not so, well, maybe we'll not to... wishing them dead, but wishing them far away in, in a cold place without a blanket. Mm. Far away. Mm. Mm. And, and that, is, is, and that like... is a prayer. And, you know, I don't really want to, to go there. To this loving, to this loving presence that you're connected with. That is not the loving presence. Right, that you're, that you're praying but to But it's that very point, much right. me and I'm a human being. Right. Yeah. So then what do I do when I find myself praying like that? Well, then I say, wait a minute, is this what you really, you know? Right, yeah. Uh, and, and then sometimes it's confusing because we're human beings. I mean, there's such things, satire and comedy and things that make you laugh. When you're just identifying some horrible warp that you have in your own um, Mm -hmm. personality that makes you laugh when you recognize it in another. Yeah. So yeah. it can be, and you shouldn't judge, I don't believe you should judge yourself for okay, that. Okay, good. This is a good place to, yeah, this is a good place to take a pause. Yes. Because <laughs> then we'll come back again. Right. Thank you very much, both of you. Yeah. See you, you all soon. <laughs>